You know, I'm starting to think there was a reason that my wire was cancelled to Coinbase, especially my extremely large wire, a seven figure wire was cancelled. And I actually tried to do subsequent transfers after that and they actually cancelled all of them. So I had to go and open a new bank account actually with Bank of America and start wiring much smaller amounts into crypto, into Coinbase specifically. So really what I actually learned was that the establishment still doesn't like cryptocurrency and definitely doesn't want big players to throw in big money, especially to the exchanges. Maybe when the ETFs come out, things are going to be safer because people like BlackRock and Blackstone are going to actually be the underlying, um, you know, provider of the liquidity and provider of the ETF. So you can be safe knowing if you invest into a BlackRock ETF, you're not going to lose that money because that, that company, you know, they're worth trillions of dollars. They run the world. BlackRock run the show. Those kind of asset managers that have that kind of money, um, you know, under management, they run the show. They can decide where the market goes, whether it goes up or down. And when they tank it with their power, then they completely decimate the market. So those are the people that really move it. So ultimately, what I learned is that the establishment, well, I was reassured, the establishment does not like cryptocurrency, does not want you putting big money, millions of dollars into crypto exchanges. They probably don't mind you putting in a few thousand dollars here and there, which is why I tried to do a $5,000 transfer into Coinbase actually from my Chase account via ACH. And this time it worked. So they don't mind you putting small money in. But when you're trying to wire money in America, when you're trying to wire large sums of money, there's a, a lot of apparent protection, right? Um, now, there's a lot of fraud and, and scams going on. And there is a reason why the banks in the US are now implementing a lot of these. I mean, I get a phone call every time I set up a wire transfer. Because there's so many fraud, there's so many scams that they're trying to actually, they are actually trying to protect. I do believe they are trying to protect the consumers because then the consumer is just going to call them and be like, hey, I got scammed. And then they're going to try and sue Chase. So Chase would have more headache than they would actually want if a bunch of their people and their consumers lost millions upon millions of dollars. So ultimately, really what the last few days has taught me is that I needed to be careful not to go gung-ho into crypto. I wanted to bang 90% you know, of, my, of my liquid money, 90-90% of my liquid capital into crypto to catch the bull run so I could boom, hit that spike and then get out and take out multiple seven figures, if not reach eight figures in cash in liquid crypto. That was the aim, right? To make some big dollar. But what this has taught me, and after a conversation with a few mentors of mine, my brother being one of them, is that I ought to re-strategize my portfolio. I now ought to actually buy 25% of cryptocurrency and 75% is going to go into the top S&P companies. So the top 10, top 20, so the, the ones I have in mind, the companies I really like that I've been doing research on for years, Lyft, the car sharing, the car ride sharing app, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, because Warren Buffett just gets it right every single time and they're sitting on a bucket load of cash, Microsoft, Alphabet, Facebook, Tesla, six, seven companies, that I've named six, that's about enough. If I have six or seven strong companies in my portfolio, then I'm happy. I'm happy to dollar cost average some large US companies, which I know are going to have a good year in 2024 because technology is going to continue to innovate and grow. Whenever there's growth in the market, it always comes from technology. Look at AI. Who do you think is going to buy all these AI companies that are coming out? What company do you think is going to buy all of these different AI businesses? The little ones that grow out, that, that will come up in 2024, 2025, the little genius AI companies that will sprout out. The big tech is going to go in and buy those companies for billions of dollars, swoop all of that into their ecosystem, and their share price continues to go up, my friends. So it would make sense. I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. 
to put 75% of my portfolio into big tech, about a smaller percentage of that into like, into Berkshire Hathaway and Lyft as backups. I do like those companies. I do like Tesla. Tesla's also basically big tech. Tesla's gonna go out there and buy the biggest AI companies and develop it themselves, right? It's hard to beat these big dogs. They're just so huge, too big to fail. And their growth will just continue to skyrocket. Sure, there'll be other companies that will pop up, but they will do the acquisition, acquiring. They will acquire all these other big companies and swoop it all up. So ultimately, it feels like 75% should go into those, into those firms on a dollar cost averaging either over a six month period or a 12 month period, right? So take a certain amount of money, split it into six months or split it into 12 and put in the same amount of money each time every month into those companies. So I'm catching a nice average price over the year. I think by doing that, I could make 10, 20% on those companies next year in 2024. And I'd be happy with that. If that makes me 10, 20%, let's just say even 10% of those companies, now, 25% of the portfolio, which I can start bringing slowly into Coinbase, is still going to go to cryptocurrency, my friends, because I do believe in the bull run. And, I, and people are talking about this, especially Rand from Crypto Banter. And my boys are talking about this. I do think there's going to be a bull run next year. And I do want to have about you know, a few hundred thousand dollars in there, not millions into crypto. I do want to have hundreds of thousands of dollars in there into the big coins. Solana's a big one, you know, a bit of Bitcoin because I want to run this trading algorithm that I've been working. I've been working with a company out of Silicon Valley for about a year and I'm going to run this trading algorithm that they've built and it performs fantastically well. So I'm actually going to run that on, uh, on I'm running that on my Binance account right now. So I'm going to run that algorithm on my Binance. It's already started performing pretty well. It's done like 8% in five weeks. Uh, as an actual trading bot, it buys and sells, right? So it doesn't just buy and hold. So that's performing well. And then the rest of it, like I said, Solana, Ethereum, three or four other coins. Thanks, by the way, guys, for putting some comments in to my last few videos on crypto because you guys are suggesting coins that I am going to look at, right? If my audience is going to suggest coins, I am going to look at those coins. Although I have my sources, we all do our own research as you're supposed to because it's at your own risk. I do want to put it into the top 10, right? So the Solanas, the Ethereums, the Cardanos, um, a bit into Bitcoin. I'm happy to, and I like BNB coin as well. I still do like that. I still reckon it's got a lot of room to grow. So if I buy five or six coins, then I can see that also growing sort of 20, 30, 40%. So combine that with the other portfolio. Really, if I can pull, if I can make 20% this year on my money, I will be happy. That's, that, that's my personal goals, my personal capital, my personal net worth, my personal structure. Every wealth manager is going to deal with you as an individual. It's a case by case basis, right? The same investment rules do not apply to absolutely everyone. And also there's no right or wrong answer until the market decides. Then there's a right and wrong answer because then we know what percentage um, you've performed that, right? So there is usually a right and wrong answer if you look historically, but moving forward, we can all take guesses, but ultimately what matters is the performance at the end of the year. So I want to be able to turn at the end of the year and say, right, I made this or I lost this and this is why and explain that and hopefully through my experiences be able to show you guys uh, so you don't make the same sort of mistakes. I should have been posting about this years ago because I've made mistakes, I've won money, I've lost money. If this was all online, it would have been bloody great content. So that's how I'm going to restructure my, my portfolio. I would like to, in a dream world, put money in stuff like, I mean, I put some money in Bonk, um, but I'd like to put some money in like Juto and Celesti and some of these other new random coins that are popping out. And, you know, like the dream of putting 50 to 100,000 on a coin and on the next Bonk and waiting for the bull run and waiting for a 50, 100x on that kind of coin and selling it out and making 10 million is the dream and the fantastical dream that people like me have because we have that kind of capital so we can throw in and take risks. But the question is, how risky am I feeling? Do I really want to be chucking in 100k on the next bonk when it could go boom, could be a rug pull, could absolutely fall to pieces. It could be completely, it could be complete BS because we know in crypto, there's still, it, it can go to zero, it can drop to 90%. I could put 100K into something and it could go up and then I'd be like, this is gonna 100X, man, this is gonna 100X, I'm telling you, because I've been there before. And then all of a sudden you go, boom, 
smashed to pieces. Something comes out about the founder. Something comes out about the company scamming. This, this happens in crypto all the time. All the time. All the time. This is why the establishment doesn't like this shit. So anyway, those are my plans so far. My financial plans, they've changed according to my risk appetite. It did make me realize, hey, do you know what? I'm being super risky here. What if someone hacks into my Coinbase? Then I lose 90% of my liquid money. So I guess now what I've done is put it into a couple of different American big banks, you know, the likes of Chase, the likes of Bank of America. And then I'm actually gonna be able to distribute it. So have a Coinbase account, but then also have ETFs and funds and stocks that I'm investing in, mainly those, those seven, eight stocks, those six, seven stocks that I mentioned at the beginning are really the ones that I'd rather invest in. Rather than investing in ETFs, I'd rather just go and buy those stocks directly from my JP Morgan self-directed investment account. So that, can, that there, some in Coinbase, some potentially invested with Bank of America, but I don't necessarily think I need to have uh, money in that account. I mean, look, if Chase and Bank of America ever go down, the world economy is going to go down. So they're probably the safest banks in the world, in my opinion. Um, so they should be good to go, given the amount of capital that they hold. Anyway, I've started to talk a little bit more about finance. I mean, a lot of the people don't know this about me. I, I have a massive finance background. I mean, my first job was, well, my first professional job was UBS Investment Bank. So guys, I was an investment banker, like growing up, because... I was nurtured into that. I went to a uni in London at Imperial College and everyone was like, oh, investment banking, investment banking, Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs. At the time, that seemed like the best thing to do. Um, but as, as time went on, I got more interested in technology and now it's like back into finance. So I love talking about finance. If you like these kind of videos, please give me a thumbs up so I can talk more about this stuff. If you're finding it helpful, then I'll definitely talk more about this stuff. Um, but I do plan to do more masculine medicine type content, right? So I love talking about fitness. I love talking about dating. I love talking about masculinity. Those are really like the pillars of the things I really could just talk about all day long and would be for sure top, not just top 1% of people in the world in regards to that, top 0.1% of people who can talk about masculinity, fitness and dating. Uh, probably similar to finance, actually, to be honest, considering the amount of money that I have and how much I've accumulated at my age and the different assets that I have, I'd be in the 0.1% as well globally on that front. But sometimes I just, it's hard for me to think about that because I do want a niche. I do want to talk about particular things in this channel and not just about like everything. Um, but some of the finance stuff has done well. You guys seem to enjoy it. Um, I'll get back to the masculinity stuff over time. But I hope you enjoyed this video. The subs are flying up. I'm, this is great. You know, I'm going to be hitting a thousand subs soon. It's exciting. And then it's the next, and then it's the next, and then it's the next. Um, so thanks for your support, guys. Really appreciate you. I've seen some great comments recently. Really, really appreciate that. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.